Hi, I'm Derek Bowles, and welcome to Courageous Conversations. Today's show should be very interesting, engaging, and educational. There's this huge debate going on across our country which talks about the refugees and what should happen, how should we respond, and some of the ideology associated with the Muslim community. Today, we're going to have a conversation with two individuals opposing viewpoints, meaning we're going to have a Muslim who has been in America living his life, being part of the community, and building his family share his thoughts. And then we're going to have a gentleman who's been born and raised in the, in the States, um, living his life, raising his family, share his thoughts. And then we'll bring everybody together to have a courageous conversation. Thank you, for, thank you for being a part of today's show. Refugees looking for refuge. Courageous Conversations with Derek Bowles is brought to you by Patriot Pawn and Gun, with three Treasure Valley locations to serve you. Hi folks, Alex from Patriot Pawn and Gun. I want to personally invite you to shop our stores. Patriot Pawn and Gun is locally owned and operated and we want your business. At Patriot Pawn and Gun, we give you cash for anything. Guns, jewelry, heck, even stuff like saddles and chainsaws. Eh, almost anything. Patriot Pawn and Gun in Meridian, Star, and Homedale. Or online at PatriotPawnandGun.com. Patriot Pawn and Gun, we're your local pawn stars. Welcome to Courageous Conversations. Today's show is going to challenge you to think about our society, our country, and what's currently happening with the refugee conversation. I have a very special guest, Donish. Welcome to the show. Very glad to be here, Derek. Thank you for having me. Donish, tell us a little bit about your background, where you're from, um, and your experience here in the United States of America. Well, uh, I was born in uh, Dubai, UAE. Uh, it's, uh, now everyone knows where, what kind of a place that is because they see it as this uh, mecca of tourism. But back then it was just a little dot and uh, I was born there in 1985. My uh, father, when I was born, applied to uh, get a visa to the United States because he wanted greater opportunities for his children than he had for himself. And when I turned eight years old, we got a call and uh, we started going through all of our docs and my aunt lived here and she said, hey, if you guys, uh, I have three brothers and we were all little, so they said, if you want to go somewhere, you want to start a business and you want to raise your boys, come to Boise, Idaho. Donish Ishawk is how we say your name. Yes. And you are currently a practicing Muslim. Yes. Now, as you know, part of today's show and the conversation really revolves around the refugee conversation, as well as the ideology of the Muslim community coming to the United States. That's a heavy topic. What are your thoughts just initially on that topic? Well, initially my thoughts on a topic like that are, yeah, they're very based on the power that we have as Americans and Idahoans. And I always link back, link this back. I don't really have a lot of statistics and things like that that I talk about, but I have stories, you know, in life. And uh, when, in 2001, when uh, the unfortunate events of September 11th happened, my family had a uh, burger restaurant in Meridian called The Dent. And the one thing that's so powerful about our community is that 9-11 and the days after were some of the busiest times for the business because people in Meridian, people that knew we were part of the community, just wanted to come by and check up on us to make sure that we were okay, that nobody gave us a hard time. Mm -hmm. And that, that moment right there made me embrace this community, really, and say, like, wow, this is my home. This is a place where, you know, this is a place where I belong, and uh, this is a place that's worthy of, like, the talents and love and all the things that we want to put out into the world, right? Absolutely. And, Absolutely. Uh, that, and I think that is uh, what I use as kind of the paradigm for my narrative, and it's that what we have in Boise, Idaho, 
is just so much more powerful. What we have in Idaho, in the Valley, in the United States in general, in a lot of places, is so much more powerful than any rhetoric. Right. And that's the freedom to have courageous conversations, the freedom to have ideas and have those ideas critically assessed by opposing ideas Yes. without having to criticize or be critical of the individual whose experience led them to those ideas. Right. And that's where I feel like the conversation is that we, you know, we're, if we're getting an influx of any population, it's not about what are they going to do when they get here. It's about how are we going to welcome them and make sure that they have the opportunity to grow and really experience the American dream that we all are lucky enough to experience every day. Absolutely. You know, from your experience and, and just based on how you physically look, what have been some of the perceptions, stereotypes, challenges, or even blessings that you have faced just based on your physical appearance? Well, uh, we can start with the negative to get it out of the way. Okay. So okay. There's, uh, there's, there's challenges, of course. Uh, I think my mother actually has a really hard time with me looking this way and having this aesthetic because she worries about how I'll be perceived. Yep. And she's worried that someone might perceive me the wrong way and want to, uh, want to hurt me because they assume, assume something right. because of my aesthetic. Um, airports, they're always a very interesting, interesting situation because you'll have those that are very critical and you'll get to go through a lot of searches and things like that. And, uh, uh, but then when you get on planes, you get very varying perspectives and you just get to see them through faces and emotions. Uh, so sometimes there's a little bit of fear. There's that person I walk by in a plane and they'll be a little bit fearful and you'll see them cringe a little bit, but I'll just make sure to keep a smile to let them know everything's okay. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. And then every once in a while there's that hero and there's that guy that's kind of played some narratives out in his head and he's like, if this guy does anything, <laughs> this is my shot. Right, this I'm is my chance. <laughs> I'm going to get him. <laughs> oh. But then there's also like the complete opposite and that's someone that's like, all right, I don't want him to feel like Right. It's bad, so uh, I'm going to smile at him, and I'm going to let him know that it's okay. And uh, so you get those, those varying experiences there. I, you know, and I think that's great, and I'm sure that was a question that people wanted to know. You know, what, are, what have been some of your experiences, just based on the perceptions that people have when you're out in everyday life? Um, I'm going to build on that question because, you know, I, I'm also curious, and I'm sure the audience is curious, you know, from a cultural perspective, from a historic, from, from Pakistan, um, the actual, the hair, the beard, the look. Give us, educate us on the history and why it's important. Well, and that's, that's what's crazy is like in Pakistan, you go there and there's some people that have beards because of tradition, because they believe that they're holy because of their beards. But then there's several that don't. In fact, most people in my family are actually like, hey, man, what's going on with your beard, buddy? Are you going to trim that down? I get calling my mom like, hey, what's going on with your son? Is he, what side is he turning to? And for me, when I started realizing how much people defined another individual by their beard, I thought, you know, it's kind of my responsibility because I'm able to have a dialogue, because I'm able to be kind, because I'm able to smile. It's my responsibility to kind of uh, maintain this aesthetic, to make sure that I have this beard, to maybe help that person that's a little more quiet mm -hmm. and has that beard and might have it because of their religious practices sure. or might have it because they're devout in, in anything. And I just want as many first impressions as I can change to change, you know? So that's the goal. No, that's great. So we're going to... We're going to transition a little bit. We're going to talk a little bit about, you know, you're here transitioning from an immigrant, immigrant, but let's talk about the refugee issue. And, you know, people have classified it as a crisis, as this influx. Um, give us a baseline on your ideas, perception on this whole idea of immigrants coming, refugees coming, um, and America being fearful. What are, you, what are your thoughts? Well, I'll tell you this, it's like uh, 
you know how sometimes when, you, when, when a kid first sees a dog and they get a little scared, their parents are like, hey, it's okay, he's a little more scared of you than you are of them. That's a lot of what's happening right now is that uh, these people are coming out of some really terrible circumstances. And a lot of these people, their entire lives have been torn by civil war and a lot of this pain. So in this constant state of anxiety and fear, they don't really expect anymore because in the media, they don't see a lot of people that are saying, hey, we've got a lot of refugees, let's bring them in, let's help them out, let's do this. They see a lot of people that have a lot of vitriol because that's all the media gets to cover. And I think they're extremely scared because they don't know where to go. The, the place where they were born and lived is in war and now they're here. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to invite a guest onto the show who will provide an opposing viewpoint as far as should refugees be allowed to come to the United States? How should we handle that screening process? And more importantly, how should we look at the bigger picture of how the United States will be impacted? We will be right back with Courageous Conversations. Hi folks, Alex from Patriot Pawn and Gun. I want to personally invite you to shop our stores. Patriot Pawn and Gun is locally owned and operated and we want your business. We're making deals on new and used guns, jewelry, name brand tools, and video games. We're big enough to offer low prices, and we're small enough to care. We don't have Rick and Big Haas, but we've got the next best thing. Come cruise our Patriot Pawn and Gun stores in Meridian, Star, and Homedale, and pick your deal today. Patriot Pawn and Gun, we're your local pawn stars. Welcome back to Courageous Conversations. Our first guest, Donish Ishawk shared a little bit of perspective, insight on the transition from being an immigrant to even entering into the refugee conversation. Now, I would like to introduce you to Alex Joy, who is going to share an opposing viewpoint on really what's happening with the refugees and how we should be thinking about it um, from the United States perspective. Welcome to the yeah. show, Alex. Thank you, Derek. Good to be here. Thanks for inviting me on. You know, first of all, I wanted to say I really admire Donish for standing up um, and giving us a moderate voice within the Islamic community locally. Um, obviously from my group, the kind of the Tea Party conservative group, there are a lot of concerns about uh, the ideology of Islam and the influx of refugees, but I've got to give credit where credit's due. And, and, and I'm, I'm really proud of a man who will stand up um, within his own group and, and show us a good moderate example. And I want to support that. Well, and that's why we're having this conversation. I mean, I yeah. think we want to provide an opportunity to, to allow people to have a voice yeah. and to put out information that comes straight from the horse's mouth. And so with that, let's talk about those concerns. Let's yeah. talk about those yeah. challenges. Uh, unfortunately, it is a, it is a uh, contentious issue, and uh, I believe that from the opposition side, there are a lot of valid reasons to um, express concern and to be concerned. Um, in, in doing my research, actually, let me tell a story first about how this uh, Islamic refugee issue got on my radar. Um, you know, I moved my family here from uh, what we call California, from the Tea Party conservative side, is okay. kind of a joke, about nine years ago. and. Uh, you know, we came to the Boise area because we wanted an area that was safe, that we could raise our kids and uh, build our family. And, and uh, we really appreciated the Idaho Western culture. And that was a big reason why we moved here. Well, you know, a, a couple of years back, my wife and I and my kids are driving in downtown Meridian. And we pull up to an intersection and uh, my son's like, Dad, look, ninjas. And I'm like, uh, those are burkas. And I look over at my wife and I look at her face and she's in horror. And walking right in front of our car are two what we assume are women, because you can't see anything. Right. I mean, even their eyes have like some kind of screen over it, but they're covered from head to toe. It's 100 degrees outside in Meridian, Idaho. And I'm having to explain to my children what this is about. And it's not the people underneath the burqa that I'm concerned about in terms of them as people. I, I felt terrible for those women, assuming they're women. Um, what, what type of ideology compels them to have to be covered from head to toe on a 100 degree day in, in Meridian, Idaho? And so that, that shook you a little that bit? That shook me, it shook me. I didn't feel, I didn't feel safe 
in Idaho anymore after that. And um, again, um, you know, it, a person like Dinesh that, that is a true moderate, I, I take a boatload of Dinesh's over in, in a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't want to see um, the burkas. I don't want to see the, the folks that um, want to come into our neighborhoods and promote you know, a form of Sharia that would compel women to, to be oppressed and have to wear this garb on a, on, a, on a hot day. So what I'm hearing you say, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, um, you're really not, uh, there's no issue with the individual, with the person. It's more the, the ideology. It's more um, come to America and assimilate to American Western culture. Is that what you're saying? I am. I, I, I don't hate anybody. I don't hate the person. I hate, I hate the bad ideology. I hate the things about Islam that would compel a woman to have to cover every square inch of her body on a 100 degree day. That, that's what I hate. And there's a reason why I believe that a lot of these Islamic folks are leaving these war-torn you know, areas that are just bad areas. Um, you know, if you're coming to America to escape what you came from, then be American. Okay. Leave, leave that stuff behind. Okay. Um, and if you're, you know, uh, w what I admire about Dinesh is there is an example of a person who is, embraces Islam as their religion, who was able to do that. You can be an American and be a Muslim. And so you're, you're saying, hey, we need to make sure that we understand that when you come to the United States, there is an American expectation. We are patriots. We we're are Americans first. Americans we're first. We're Christians. We're, we're Islamists. We're Buddhists second. Um, it, the, the America is built on a Judeo-Christian concept and construct. And it doesn't mean that you have to be a Christian to, to live in America, but you have to accept our culture and you have to accept our construct. Uh, otherwise, why are you coming here? If you want Sharia law, then go to one of the 50 Islamic majority nations where Sharia law is the law of the land. 80% of the world's Muslims live in 50 Islamic majority nations. There are 50 other nations we can resettle folks that want Sharia law. If you want to come to America and bring Sharia law with you, in my opinion, and in the opposition's opinion, that's not, it's like pounding a square peg through a round hole. It's just not gonna work long term. Let's change gears a little bit. Let's, let's, let's talk refugees. Yes. It's a, it's a huge issue. Um, Very hot topic right now. Hot topic. Um, the, the state of Idaho, like we just uh, talked about, is number six in the, in the United States as a relocation place. Yes. What are some of your concerns as far as the refugee um, movement happening all at once, the screening process? What are, what are some of the things that you see as issues? I, I think we need to slow down and we need to evaluate who's coming in. Um, I went to the CSI board meeting uh, in Twin Falls where there's a big push uh, to, to uh, resettle a lot of the Syrian refugees. One of my concerns is the U.S. government told us, uh, you know, that they were supporting the moderate Syrian rebels. Well, those, those folks turned out to be ISIS. Uh, and now we're being told that they want to resettle moderate Syrian refugees. I, th there's a lot of distrust in the American government. Um, it's hard to believe what they're telling us anymore. And it's either incompetence or it's intentional, but there is a concern there. Um, we want to make sure that these Syrian refugees are the, Don the Donishes and not the Johnny Jihads. Um, we want to make sure that they've been vetted properly, um, if at all. Uh, I mean, why can't we find a solution where we resettle them in, in, in a nation that's more compatible with their ideology? There, there's an Egyptian billionaire that just uh, came out in the news the other day that said he wanted to buy an island off the coast of Greece. And he wants to institute Sharia there, build some factories, and put the, resettle the refugees and put them to work. Great. Let's explore those kind of options in addition to, I don't accept the premise that they have to, you know, uh, Islamic ideologues have to be put into Idaho, into our culture. Sure. But, but again, to balance that out, meeting Donish is very inspiring, gives me hope. I, I have no problem with true moderates. No problem at all. They, because, because they are assimilating into our society. I heard Donish uh, speak the other day. He, he, he's an American first. He, he, he doesn't want Sharia law uh, for Idaho. He, he, he appreciates the liberty and the, and the American construct. Well, and one of the things about today's show and this courageous conversation is we're going to have an opportunity to bring Donish and Alex 
together and we're going to have a conversation. We're going to discuss the different um, viewpoints and try to figure out how we can come together to make sure that we're not judging, assuming or making false uh, uh, statements in regards to what's happening in our country. Thank you for tuning in to Courageous Conversations. We will be right back. Hi folks, Alex from Patriot Pawn and Gun. I want to personally invite you to shop our stores. Patriot Pawn and Gun is locally owned and operated and we want your business. At Patriot Pawn and Gun, we give you cash for anything. Guns, jewelry, heck, even stuff like saddles and chainsaws. Eh, almost anything. Patriot Pawn and Gun in Meridian, Star, and Homedale. Or online at PatriotPawnandGun.com. Patriot Pawn and Gun, we're your local pawn stars. Welcome back to Courageous Conversations with both of my two guests, Donish Ishawk, Alex Joy. We've been having a very sober conversation about the refugees, um, looking for refuge, stereotypes, overcoming stereotypes, living life, and being American citizens. Let me start off by asking questions to you, Donish. How do you feel we can rectify the refugee situation and some of the stereotypes associated with it? Well, one thing is to say, uh, in, in situations where someone is oppressed as a woman, or so if uh, in Alex's situation, he was talking about the women in burqas, right? So if, the, if our issue is women's rights, then we have to look at whichever community they settle in for there to be support for women, organizations like the Women's and Children's Alliances, places that they can go if they feel suppressed or abused. And then also remember that there's a lot of women that by choice choose to wear those burqas and are, are not suppressed into it. It's actually just their modesty or ideal, which is a lot of my aunts, that they run their houses. There's no way their husbands could tell them to do anything but they choose to wear that burqa because it's their tradition. It's part of their tradition. Thank you. You know, Alex, I want to ask you more, you know, in alignment with um, how do we help to mitigate and remove some of the fear associated with the ideology of, you know, the Muslim community, some of the, the uh, stereotypes of ISIS being part of the refugee movement. What should we be doing? Yeah, it, it, it's a tough issue to resolve. Um, again, it's very encouraging to meet Donish and uh, and to and to hear that perspective because from you know from the uh, white American conservative perspective, it's uh, w we can only see what we can see. It's like trying to explain blue to someone that's colorblind. Um, he he sees it from a different perspective, and me hearing that a woman wants to wear the burqa, it's hard for me to understand that. Um, but, uh, but I'm open that there are cases where it's not oppression um, and it's not some kind of cult-like indoctrination that's making them do it, that maybe sincerely as part of their religion, maybe like a nun who you know, almost all the way covers themselves up. I've heard that analogy used and that, that's a Christian example that it makes a little bit of sense to me. Nuns you know, walk around all covered up almost. So, you know, and that's a different perspective. And that's why we need to have these conversations because I can only see through the lens and experience I have. And he sees through the lens and experience he has. And my opinions have changed a little bit. At first I was opposed completely to any Islamic refugees. Now, I, you know, from my perspective, I'm more open if the screening is done well. If we can have people like Donish as refugees and some of the good success stories I saw at the CSI board meeting, I'm open to it. At the same time, I think we need to be responsible. We can't just, uh, you know, there are, there is evil in the world. There are bad guys looking to exploit the refugee Absolutely. programs. ISIS and Al Qaeda are openly saying that they want to use these programs to get their bad people here. So we need to be paying attention, but we also need to be open to the concept and educating ourselves to other people's culture, other people's um, background history with the understanding that we're all humans. Is that a fair assessment? I agree. We need to find a balance. We need to be responsible, but at the same time, we can't be so cynical that we're going to write a, a, a really good guy like Dinesh off just because he's Muslim. Well, and this is a courageous conversation. And so what I would like to do is I want to give you both about 15 seconds, if you can honor that, to just give us your closing thoughts that you want the audience to take away from this show. 
One of the greatest results of a Syrian refugee is a man named Steve Jobs. His father came here uh, as a war refugee. He went to college and had a child with a Catholic woman. Her father did not want her to marry him and he put the child up for adoption and that child ended up changing the world. And the United States is the only country where people have the opportunity to do that from the bottom up. And uh, I think we have the next Steve Jobs and some of these refugees and uh, they're going to come here and they're going to get to meet the beautiful people of our state and be inspired to do more. Donis, thank you. Alex, 15 seconds. My, my pushback would be that uh, that's a great story. We also have to be concerned about uh, the Mr. Kurbanovs, who was arrested in Boise in 2013, who was a refugee, who was plotting terrorism and recruiting jihadis. So I think we need to have uh, you know, responsible resettlement. We need to make sure we know who these people are that are coming here to the best of our ability. I would like to thank you both. Donish, it's a pleasure. Alex, it's a pleasure. A member of our viewing audience asked a question, and Alex Joy, I would love for you to take this one first. Sure. They wanted to know that if you leave this show today, mm -hmm. what would be the first thing that you could do in your community to start to bridge the gap um, to help us kind of find some type of common ground? Sure. I think exactly what we're doing today, having these discussions. Um, I am uh, very encouraged to make a new friend in Dinesh, in Danish, who is a true moderate. And I think the true moderates within Islam in our community need to stand up and uh, they need to reach out. We need to, we need to stick our hands out and link hands with them and, and build relationships with the true moderates. And again, I liked how Danish earlier in the, in the discussion talked about Boise and what a unique area this is. It starts here at the local level. We need to uh, make friendships with the moderates and, and continue to have these discussions. Great, thank you. Danish, if you were to leave it today, what, what could you do in your community to help bridge this gap? Well, I would say for uh, every person that is, a, uh, that is a Muslim, go and adopt a Tea Party member. Go in and invite them over for dinner to your house. Don't talk about politics. Talk about your kids. Talk about your hopes. Talk about your fears. And if you're a Tea Party member, do the same thing. If you want to know more about a Muslim, don't talk to them about the doctrine. Don't talk to them about the Quran. Don't talk to them about war. Talk to them about their children. Talk to them about their hopes. Talk to them about their dreams. Then you'll find that common ground. And that's how we're really going to create this change. You know, this show has been um, not just educational, but inspiring. Hopefully those of you who have watched this show have a different perspective, some different ideas, and you have the courage to take the next step to have these conversations with those that you may not know much about. We appreciate you tuning in. We appreciate you being part of the show. Thank you for being part of Courageous Conversations. Courageous Conversations with Derek Bowles is brought to you by Patriot Pawn and Gun, with three Treasure Valley locations to serve you. Please visit www.derekbowles.com to start the process of impacting life, leadership, legacy.